Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. The Detroit Archdiocese inviting Catholics to return for in-person mass next month, though there are some exceptions. Questions are coming in from people who've gotten a COVID vaccine and now want to donate blood. Dr. McGeorge has some answers just ahead. A major human trafficking bust has the Oakland County prosecutor highlighting the problem and the different approach she's taking to try to address it. Let's start, though, here at 6 with breaking news from Capitol Hill. Senators voting to move forward with the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. The Senate voted 56 to 44 that the process is constitutional. Six Republicans voted with the Democrats. Eleven more Republicans would need to join them to convict the former president. For the vote, impeachment managers showed a video of the insurrection at the Capitol. They argue former President Trump egged on supporters to carry out that attack. The president's lawyers argue he was speaking figuratively and is protected by the First Amendment. We can't possibly be suggesting that we punish people for political speech in this country. Presidents can't inflame insurrection in their final weeks and then walk away like nothing happened. They've adjourned for the day. The trial will continue tomorrow at noon. All right, now to this major human trafficking bust in Oakland County. Two people are in custody, and prosecutor Karen McDonald hopes a third suspect will be soon. Local 4 defender Sean Lay reports it's the result of several months of work by Madison's Heights PD, Homeland Security, and others. Absolutely disturbing case, guys. Here's an interesting part of it. This bust was made by the first ever Oakland County Prosecutor's Office unit focused right on human and sex trafficking. This crime is happening right here in Oakland County. Hundreds, if not thousands of girls being trafficked online here in Metro Detroit. So many ads for what could be prostitution focused on our entire area. New Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald says a massive investigation found adults trafficking minors for sex right in Madison Heights Motel. These are cases in which we have teenage women, no teenage girls actually, being trafficked into prostitution, children exploited in the worst way imaginable by adults who trade their bodies for cash. Right now, under arrest, Levante Sampson of Harper Woods and Crystal Forgays of Warren. The charges they're facing should shake parents to their cores. The couple is accused of luring young girls into prostitution, getting them hooked on drugs, and using Madison Heights motels to profit by selling their victims' bodies to Johns. This couple now facing a very long list of very serious charges, but there's one more suspect out there. Police are looking for a man named Carl Lorenzo Perkins, one more suspect allegedly involved in this sex trafficking ring. Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, let's get now to today's latest coronavirus developments in our state. Michigan reports 563 new cases. That's the lowest number since September. Unfortunately, the state also reports 60 new deaths. Detroit will hold vaccination clinics at two churches over the next month as it looks to get more seniors the vaccine. And also today, Governor Whitmer said the state is on track for its goal of 50,000 vaccine doses administered each day as more doses are being sent out by the White House. She also called on state lawmakers to approve her spending bill, which would appropriate federal funding she sees as crucial to the state's COVID response. These are dollars that came from a bipartisan group of our congressional delegation and were signed into law by President Trump and that we still haven't deployed into Michigan. These are dollars for vaccines, dollars for education of our children, dollars for helping businesses that are struggling, and of course dollars to help people who are, are struggling as well. So we need Republicans and Democrats in Michigan's legislature to appropriate these dollars, all of these dollars, as quickly as possible. Well, that money is tied up as Republicans push a plan that would give them more control of the purse strings. In a statement, GOP House Speaker Jason Wentworth said, quote, despite what the governor said, our plan simply refuses to throw all the money in at once. Our plan addresses all needs from getting people vaccinated to opening schools to helping suffering businesses and families. But it does it right and it holds the governor to a higher standard to fix the problems we all have seen, end quote. 
The Archdiocese of Detroit this afternoon invited more Catholics back to Mass. Of course, for the past nine months, the church has largely told parishioners to stay at home or watch Masses online, but now it's encouraging getting back into the pews. Rod Maloney joins us live now with what the Archdiocese is saying. A few uh, exceptions here that they're being handed out, Rod. Uh, as you might expect, Evan, now let's, we're here at the Prince of Peace Catholic Church in West Bloomfield today. They're getting ready for this change in the rules, so to speak. But let's be clear, this is not getting back to full normal. The Archdiocese today announced it's going to end the general dispensation from Mass and Holy Days on Saturday, March 13th. Now, Monsignor Gary Spatanka, pastor of Our Lady Star of the Sea, tells us why. People are out about doing other non-essential things. We want to invite them back to do something that's most essential to their faith. So here's how it works. The liturgical directives stay in place. Churches can only have 50% capacity for any mass. They're still required to do frequent building sanitations. Everyone must wear masks and sit with social distancing guidelines, which doesn't change much in the churches, except, says the Monsignor, increase attendance. Many of the churches we found, many of the parishes we found, uh, still are not even at their 50% capacity. Some are still maybe around at most of their masses at 25, 30%. So there's still some room for people to come back. There are still personal dispensations that allow Catholics to remain at home and watch mass on social media. If you're in ill health or have underlying conditions, exhibiting flu-like symptoms, or have been in recent contact with a COVID positive person or someone with the flu, they want you to stay home. If you're pregnant, care for the sick, homebound or infirmed, are age 65 and older, or have a significant fear of becoming ill, you also do not need to physically attend Mass. It gives people another chance to kind of slowly come back uh, to receive the, the sacraments. Now, 50% is the threshold, and we've seen a lot of churches cutting down on the number of masses. So as they get to 50% in all their masses, you're likely to see them add still more masses. One of the things that uh, the Monsignor talked about today was that if you get to the door, it's 50% capacity and you can't get in, well, strangely enough, you've met your obligation for the week. Back to you. Uh, Rod, of course, finding a mass has been uh, more difficult during this crisis than it used to be, right? Yes, uh, it has, but the diocese is taking that into account and so much more. Uh, they put out a release today, have a lot of links to their website. So if you go to clickondetroit.com, we'll show you exactly how to find a mass yeah. near you as quickly as possible. Deal. All right, Rod. Well, as more people are getting vaccinated, they're encountering new situations they never thought about before. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is back to answer some viewer questions regarding donating blood and convalescent plasma. Yeah, Kim, so I've received a number of questions about convalescent plasma donations. That's plasma from people who have recovered from a coronavirus infection. Some people actually want to know if they can donate convalescent plasma after they're vaccinated because they should have antibodies. The actual answer is no, they can't. And the reason is that after vaccination, you only have antibodies to the spike protein. People who have survived an actual infection have antibodies that cover many more parts of the coronavirus. Now here are some related questions. A viewer writes, I had my first COVID vaccine on Saturday and donated blood on Monday. I'm told that the Red Cross screens for COVID antibodies. Will my recent vaccine impact that screening? If so, how? This is a really important question and I'm going to break it up into parts. First, Yes, the Red Cross does screen for antibodies. The test used for screening is by orthodiagnostics and looks for antibodies to the all-important the second part of the question. Will a vaccine impact that screening? The answer is yes. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines cause you to produce antibodies to the spike protein, and those will be found on the test used by the Red Cross. But... If you test positive for antibodies to the spike protein, they do a second test, this one made by Roche, and it looks for antibodies to a different coronavirus protein. It's called the nucleocapsid. If your blood is positive for both spike and nucleocapsid antibodies, it means you've been infected. If you are only positive for spike antibodies but not nucleocapsid antibodies, then your antibodies are probably only from the vaccine. Now, finally, that brings up another question. Jennifer asks, is it recommended to get your antibodies checked 
after a certain amount of time to make sure you are still protected from the vaccination? The answer is no, and that's for several reasons. First off, not all available antibody tests are looking for antibodies to the spike protein, which is, of course, what you make after you're vaccinated. Some antibody tests are actually expected to stay negative after you're vaccinated. Second, even if you did have a test for anti-spike antibodies and they were positive, we just don't have enough data to know how that equates to protection from infection. The only thing the presence of antibodies to the spike protein tells us at this point is whether someone has had a vaccine or been infected. Back to you. Okay, Dr. McGeorge, we appreciate it very much. And remember, you can submit a question on the homepage of our website. Just go to clickondetroit.com. Still ahead, going way beyond self-defense, we're going to meet a local change maker who is using martial arts to teach much bigger lessons to young people. And here's Ben. Kim and Devin, we didn't see a whole lot of clouds today, and you know what that means tonight. Getting even colder, single-digit lows on the way, and we'll tell you why to expect more of those coming up. Plus, an argument between moviegoers ends in bloodshed in Macomb County. What led to the violence? Next.